Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm currently on a train. As you can see, I'm on a miniature Pullman train. Oh, and there's another train going past behind me. We're at the Barnard's Miniature Railway in Essex. It's a very, very extensive miniature railway. I was just going for a walk around the grounds when I saw this little Pullman unit was about to head back to the main station. So I thought, what, what I'll do is I'll start the video here for a change. What we're going to do, we're going to have a ride around most of this extensive railway. We're not going to quite do all of it for reasons I'll explain. And then we're going to explore the gardens because there's some rather unusual sculptures. Um, you may have seen we just went past some coloured cows and uh, there is a giant pencil. So we're going to head to the main station now. We're going to go for a very, very exciting ride.
So we're at the other end of the line. We've just seen a train pass on the London Tilbury and South End line. So that way is looking towards London Fenchurch Street. And of course that way goes towards South End. Now from this station I thought we'd leave the train here and we'd go for a walk. So the train went off back to where we started. We're going to have a little look around. I'm just going to show you the station. Now it's nice and quiet and then we'll walk through the gardens. There's some very interesting sculptures to see and we'll see some line side shots of the trains going by and I can talk a bit about the railway because we've had the ride but I haven't really said much other than where we are. So let's just have a look at this station. It's very unusual. It has the appearance of like um, a ruined Greek temple with all these columns everywhere. Apparently what it was was they had it as a station with an overall roof and the wind damaged it which is a bit of a shame in some ways but then in other ways it makes it well I've never been to a miniature railway station that's like a Greek temple before. Now the line continues through a tunnel and runs parallel to the main line but the recent heat wave has damaged some of the tracks so unfortunately trains are only going this far but then it's a very very extensive railway so you know we've had a, a long ride as it is so it's not the end of the world and as I've always said with Miniature Railway Britain if we somewhere changes or we don't do all of a Miniature Railway we'll simply come back again. No steam to running today either, that's due to potential fire risk because of you know the heat wave and most railways haven't been running steam lately. I was in Hungary the other day and they were running a steam train on the main line and I thought how are they getting away with that? Well it then dawned on me, it was oil fired, if you want to see that have a look at the link on screen now. Um, so there's not been a lot of steam over the last month or so and if you wonder why, if you're watching this video in a few years time, look at this. The river is dried up. So there's a miniature railway bridge here. You can just see down there, fixed distance signal for the station. And then the London Tilbury and South End line, there's a little level crossing here so we can cross the track. Um, so the track does continue. I think then there's a culvert there under the main line. And there's the other end of the tunnel that we to go through. So another time we'll come here and do that. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna explore the rest of the site and look at the sculptures. The railway continues down there. I do want to go to that end and find that station, but now I'm going to head into the gardens and see what we can find. I'm in a wigwam of all places. I've never been to a wigwam and a miniature railway at the same place before. I'll go out and show you where we are. It's like we've kind of um, kind of come somewhere to another country where they have wigwams. It's uh, the sort of randomness of this place. There's all sorts of different sculptures and themes and everything, which makes it really quite exciting. So we're going to continue along here. Look at these, there's some cacti. Is that a train? No, maybe not. That's what I heard a train. Because yeah. the uh, London Tilbury and South End line is just there. Look at these, these cacti. These are pretty cool. So there's all sorts of sculptures like this around the site. There's just so many. I can't possibly feature them all, but I'm going to try and show you some of the best. Look at that. Metal cacti. It's like being out in the desert. Especially with the wigwams. And then we walk over here. So if you'd like to come to this Barnard's Mitch Railway and indeed the gardens, be careful which days you choose. On a Thursday, like it is today, the gardens are open and the railway's open. They have some days which are possibly more aimed towards railway enthusiasts, but those days are just for doing the railway and you wouldn't be able to come around these gardens. They have various other open days and galas throughout the year, so it really is worth coming to. And um, I'm, I'm here on a Thursday afternoon in the summer, as you've gathered it's the summer, and there's not too many more people here now, but it's it's just really exciting. And, you know, even there's quite a lot, of, there are a lot of cars here, and I thought it's really busy, but everyone's just sort of dispersed into the site. The other thing they do to sort of make sure you see the maximum amount of sculptures you can is you follow these. So see this B and the blue arrow, that's one trail you can do. I think there's a red trail as well. So that's one way of being, you, you can follow those trails and see as many sculptures as you can. Regarding getting here, you've pretty much got to come by car. Although the railway is close, and so is West Horndon Station, unfortunately there's no real public footpath to get you there. And 
the walk along the road there's no pavement so that would be a bit dangerous so I don't suggest coming here by a train. If you're wondering what you can hear behind me, it's not a train, but if you don't want to walk around the gardens, they do these buggy tours around the garden. So that's one way of getting to explore the garden. So there's not just trains here. So let's go now and have a look around the rest of the gardens. Let's leave the teepees behind. With the heat though, I just feel like I'm in the desert. I'm gonna leave that old couple to continue with their walk and looking into the pond. And um, I think we might be near the other end of the railway line. It's just over here where that um, sculpture there is. Yeah, look, it's a little station here. So if we'd come on the train all the way, we would have arrived at this station here. Would have come from just along there. So although it's not so obvious, there is the two railways are running parallel to each other. So what's it called, this station? It's called Angel Green. So here we are, we've arrived at Angel Green Station, over on foot, not by train. And there's a turntable there for the loco to turn around before heading back. The locos they've got, they've got a lot of locos that are Mardikes. Now we've, we, well, well we did, didn't we, on the first train, we saw that Hymek going the other way. So that's built by Mardike. Um, the loco we went on was quite a rare loco to get for which because that's normally their permanent way loco, but because they're not running steam at the moment, that's why we travel behind that loco. They've got various Exmoor steam locos, and they've got a couple of what are the Thomas locos, not Thomas the tank engine, Thomas is a make of steam loco. I'm going to have this bridge now, going onto an iron. So they've got various different locos you can see. So if you were to come for a steam guard, which I think will have to be in my next visit, then you see all kinds of things. There's that jetty, there's the, the buggy tour, even somehow, Having these pylons running over the site, they just somehow fit in. It's, it's all very nice here. Now I'm going to go back over the bridge and explore more of the gardens. It's an interesting garden, electrical insulators mixed with roses. Now this garden, we have to walk across on the stepping stones. We, the way it's ploughed with the, the stones, we, we can't actually walk on the stones. So what we're going to do, we'll start to Across the stepping stones, which is quite fun. So, if you look carefully, you may be able to see how someone's kind of raked all the stones in a certain way. So, we'll follow it this way. That makes it quite exciting. Get to a junction here. So, the path that way, that's the main road, which I mentioned has no pavement. I'm going to go this way because someone else has already gone down that one. So, now in the shade, you might be able to see better what I mean about the raked stones so that's quite cool I, I, I like gardens i do like traditional gardens in stately homes but i also like gardens like this that are just a bit different okay this is although this is actually a bit more traditional like a vegetable garden so i like gardens of any type really um and there's everywhere you look there's like and you can't possibly do it all in a day but everywhere i look there's like another path going off somewhere we were sort of in the more open vastness of the gardens now we're kind of in the more compartmentalized gardens and you're never quite sure what you're going to find that's the house here so it was originally barnard's farm and it, it was all farmland and um the owners have simply converted it well it's their house I don't, i'm not going to go over there because it's kind of don't want to invade on their privacy but they do at the same time open the gardens for people to visit so that is the house there oh look at that that's cool it's like a sea of blue um, so we're now, well I'll show you where we are, we're almost back to where we started, back to the main railway station, the one with the overall roof. So what we'll do, we'll walk down here, because there's quite a nice lake down here, so as it's getting slightly later in the day, see all these cars? They're people who have been here for the last few hours and they're on their way home. So we're just going to go across here and uh, look at this, this is cool. There's uh, like, a, well, there's a man on a thing and there's a... There's, a jetty crossing the lake and we'll do that they do also i think it's open today have a collection of interesting cars so if you come on another day you can see it's like an old petrol station you'd get to see that but again perhaps we'll come another day but look at this i love things like this this is exciting and then we'll be back at the station i do want to go into the middle of the site and I want to show you the other station which we passed through, Belvedere Station. There's some interesting stuff to see and talk about there. So let's go down that way into the gardens. We've now come down the main hedge 
and in each of the little kind of arcoves there's various different sculptures. There's also this bloke here who's a sculpture. It's funny, my head looks bigger than his, but if we go like this, you can see, I'm not saying he's big headed, but his head's bigger than mine. I can hear the trains again. Now there's some, I don't know if you can pick it out, I can just see the train just there. And there's some railways here, are uh, quite complex. So there's the line we came on, I suppose that's the main line. As we saw when we were on the train, it was double track to start with. And then after Belvedere, it became single track. And then at the station we got off at, you could have passed another train, but it was, continues to be single track. Uh, here's another lake with low water. And uh, this lake here has got a lot more water. So going back to the railways. Now we went, the railway line runs along there. They've, they're working on building a branch line called the Lakeside Branch, which you'll be able to, I understand, change trains at Belvedere to catch a train on that branch. So that'll be quite exciting. We're going to go over to Belvedere Station soon and have a look. So here's a lake. And if you look, as if sort of out of nowhere, a miniature railway just starts or ends here and it weaves its way off around there. So that's the end of the lakeside branch, which you'll get from Belvedere. We'll have a look at that when we get there. Now, there's a very unusual sculpture here. You know, I said about how the pylons, I think, complement the gardens. What's this? This looks exciting. Yeah, so they, they do. Um, but I've just, we're going off on a slight tangent. Look at this. This is exciting. So sort of a, every now and then, you'll kind of come to these strange little sculpture -y kind of, you know, it's um, and they and things line up. I know on a lot of traditional country gardens, things do line up, but here they do. This is comfortable. Could just sit here for the rest of the afternoon, but then I think I'd rather go and look at the trains. But that is comfortable. So yes, there's lots of things here designed, so your eye leads you from one thing to another, which I'll show you when we get to here. So you can see this rather unusual-looking sculpture here, or more like a piece of modern art, and you look straight down. See there's that man over there. Look straight down to the main house. Let's go have a look at this. This is exciting. Oh look at that. It's just, yeah, I quite like it. Last time I went somewhere where there was lots of modern art was um, Houghton Hall in Norfolk. Have a look at that video. Link on screen now. Let's go in here though. Look at this. And we come into this building. Yeah, so there's our windows, and you look straight down there, and you can see straight to the house. It's a dead straight line. And then out here, the line continues a bit, crossbar railway line. You've got, I don't think it's supposed to be a, a halt, but it's a bit like a halt. So we go down here. You can sit here and watch trains if you wanted to. So we'll get, get to down here, no train coming. More insulators, users, sculptures. So I could just sit here and watch trains. Because you'd also see trains on the main line as well. That'd make a picture if a charter train, like a steam train, ran along there, and you feel the steam train going along here. So I'm going to head that way now and head over to have a look at Belvedere Station.
So we've seen a few line slide shots. This is known as Prudder Lane, which we've just been walking down. The Prudder is spelt like that. It doesn't look like it, I know. It's one of those phonetic traps. The actual Prudder itself is a railway station on the Newcastle to Carlisle line. So as we come down here, that's the double track section. We're going to go walk over this really rather interesting bridge here. And the railway runs over another bridge there. We're going to have a look at Belvedere Station. And there's one more part of the garden I really want to show you before we go. So Belvedere, you could say, is the crew of the Barnard's Miniature Railway. It's the, the junction station where you can change trains and go to different places or parts of the railway. We saw the Lakeside branch a moment ago, or before we saw the line side shots, well, we saw the end of it. So this is where it starts. So eventually you'll be able to travel by train in whichever direction and catch a train to the Lakeside. We're going to go up there in a minute because that looks exciting, but now let's go to Belvedere Station. Of course there is a Belvedere Station in Kent, which is not far that way, well, 10 miles or that way, but on the opposite of the Thames. So that's why they've given this station name Belvedere, I understand. So here we are, we've arrived at the station. We sit here, wait for a train, I don't know, they waiting rooms. Um, there are also waiting rooms, I think, where you can sit and wait if it was a, not such a warm day. Anyway, I'm gonna explain the track layout here because it's, it's fairly complex. So it's got a bay platform here, now, when I started the video on that Pullman unit, I, I caught it here. I've been walking around the gardens and I caught the train there. Now, down this end of the platform, there's another bay platform. That is the Lakeside Bay. So if you look, you've got three tracks. So a down train would be coming from where we started. It would pass through here and it has to wait there for a train to come off the single line. This track here, the middle track, is also down line, but that forms a loop which comes back onto here. So when a train comes back from the single track section, it will be on the far track over there, it will come across this diamond crossing and onto here. And when this train arrives, so earlier on when we were, we were waiting there, we had to wait for a train to come off here. But in theory, a train could also come through here, around the loop and back to here. And then the line there, that one is the Lakeside branch. We're now going to exit the station and we're going to climb the hill and we're that's where I think we'll conclude our visit. I have really enjoyed it here. I definitely will come back. Um, definitely see the steam running. It's a bit of a shame, you know, with the heat, but I mean, I understand, you know, no railway wants to start fires. So that's why they weren't running steam today. Look at these roses. One thing I'd say about this place is it's not a flower garden. Apart from here, there's not lots of, it's not one of those gardens where you see lots of different flowers. It's more of a sculpture garden and it's kind of more about walking through the trees. It's a very relaxing, calming place, I find. I found, you know, it's just, just very relaxed and just such a nice atmosphere to be here. So it really is, it's a nice place, but it's not the sort of gardens where you're going to see loads and loads of flowers like you might at some other garden. So as you, if we even walk up here, you see different vistas going off in different directions. And I was saying about earlier how things line up and then look again. The rhinoceros there so we've got the lakeside branch here and the return loop so the return loop runs along there and round and back and then that's the single track section the mainline serviced over there and uh, so trains on yeah so there's the loop and I'm, I'm yeah and the lakeside branch do also use that bit of track the train's coming back around there on the loop and when they and that's also the trains on the lakeside branch go that way. Quite complex track layout. We've finished walking along up here. Oh, and by the way, that is a runway along there. They have got an aeroplane here, so you can, in theory, you could, if you had an aeroplane and you spoke to, got the right permissions, spoke to South End Air Traffic Control, you could come here by plane. Um, but yeah, I don't have a plane. So we're now, we've kind of come almost 360 because there is Belvedere Station. But we've got to keep going to get to the top of this, this, um, you know, this, whatever it is, mound, which we're following up. I've been told that the spoils to create this mound came from the lake. When they dug the lake, they then piled it up high. So there's some complex track work down there. I can see four different tracks. And um, it's, yeah, like I say, it's the loop the main line and the lakeside branch. I'm almost at the top now, so we're gonna see what there is to see. The views over the site. It's really 
quite exciting. We're almost here now. You get another view that way of the end of the runway. Not many miniature railways have an end of a runway. Just look at that. So we are very close to the top now. There's, funny enough, another sculpture on the top. I think I'm about the last person left here. It feels like it could rain soon. So as soon as I've done this, I'm going to walk back. And um, I think even the train stopped running, so I don't think I can get the train back. But wow, look at this, it's exciting. As I said about all the railways and everything, the lakeside branch runs along there by the runway and into the trees that way. The main line runs off over there and eventually to over there. You can see all those vistas we saw, the rhinoceros, the upside down man, some electric light sculptures. Down there, there's a giant spider. Down there's Belvedere Station. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and do come and visit the Barnards Mitch Road. As I said, it's best not to try and come by public transport because you can only really walk along the road with no pavement. So I wouldn't suggest doing that. So I do suggest, you know, um, getting uh, coming by car. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from the top of this hill at the Barnards Mitch Railway, 